Today we are going to do something completely pointless. We're going to be taking a look at a refutation of the England Gambit that you absolutely do not need to know. I just had uh, one of these happy little moments that sometimes occurs in chess where I had just booked up on a dirty little sideline that you can play against the England Gambit. And I was fortunate enough that the first game I played was an opponent who played the England Gambit against me and I was able to get a fast and dirty win. So I wanted to share this interesting but in a way, at least theoretically, completely pointless opening uh, that you can play against the England Gambit. You'll see exactly what I mean. Let's just jump into it. I'm going to share the game that I played, and I'm also going to show just a little bit of the theory, a little bit of the prep that went into this little win that I got. So this is the England Gambit. And uh, in this position, there's already a well-established, well-known way to refute this. And the main line goes knight to c6, knight to f3, and after queen to e7, we all know you play bishop to f4. And black's main point is to play queen to b4. This is kind of the, the main point of this unusual queen to e7 move. You attack the bishop, you attack the king, it's check, and you attack the b pawn. So everybody knows you play bishop to d2. And every game from here goes queen takes b2, and uh, you resist a few of the traps here with white. You simply develop your piece. You book up on a couple of these interesting but tricky and dubious lines. There's knight to b4. There's bishop to b4. You turn your computer on. This will say something like plus two already in a position like this. It's totally winning for white. This gambit has already been refuted. There's no reason to look at anything else. Um, and we won't dive too much into the, the actual refutation. But I noticed in the database that there's another move in this position, and it just gets me curious, because all the time in the game of chess, when there's a move, and it's plus two in this case, which is really extreme, and the next best move is knight to c3, and it says 0, 0.00, it's very easy to simply discard a move like this. But these kinds of moves always get me very curious, because there's so much chess that's playable beneath the surface, below this level of theory, that never gets played. It's never going to be in a textbook. It's probably never going to be in another YouTube video. It's just a weird line that had me curious because it sacrifices an entire piece. And I'm like, what is this? What's the main idea? And I kind of looked into it for a little bit. And I'm like, wow, this is actually very dangerous for white. Black really does need to kind of walk a very thin line if you decide to play this kind of wacky move, which... At first, the computer won't give you any advantage at all. It'll say it's about equal. But I think if you dive a little bit deeper, white might be able to find a pretty comfortable way of getting a slight advantage in almost any theoretically difficult case. But again, I think it's black walking a very thin line. And it's a really cool idea. So let's dive into it and see what's happening here. But before we look at what happens if they take our bishop, I do want to point out one other interesting little curiosity. If black does decide to take on b2, you can actually play bishop to d2, and we've transposed back into that other theory line. This is the actual <laughs> the actual refutation of the England Gambit. Black can play one of these moves. Very tricky. Book up. Know your stuff. That's not what we're here to discuss today. I want to show what happens if they take our bishop on f4. What is the point of this? Uh, well, as you can already see from the database, this is a database of Lee chess games above me. Uh, the main move here is knight to d5. This is our devious point as white. We now attack the queen, and we threaten this massive fork on c7. So black already has to be very cautious. And the reason I'm putting the database there is I want you to see how often players actually do mess this up. Uh, it doesn't seem like very many players find the right continuation for, white, uh, for black. sorry, But in this position, my opponent did find the right move queen to e4. And a central idea, one of the most important ideas for black, is to try to win this e-pawn as quickly as possible. Very often black is going to get in trouble if this pawn gets to sit here on e5. It does an awesome job preventing this knight from coming out to f6. And in a lot of cases, and especially after we force the king to move, uh, it's preventing this d-pawn without the d-file opening up You'll, you'll see how this pawn, uh, you'll kind of with a lot of examples here, might be able to see how strong this guy really, really is. So one common mistake that might lead to a lot of really quick wins for white is the idea of moving the queen somewhere else, like queen to a4. And wherever the queen moves, let's first see our main idea is the same, so it's easy for us. We play knight takes c7, the king will move to d8, and we're going to grab the rook. 
Now, Black basically has three, uh, three main plans in a position like this. The most common, it seems, is to play b6, which has the idea of just trying to win our knight back. Um, this will not do, as we will see. Another common idea is queen to b4 check. If you play the England gambit, you might just be kind of used to uh, going and grabbing this pawns, but we really don't care about these. If our e-pawn gets to live, we're very, very happy. The, the pawn on e5 is very strong. We'll give up a couple pawns on the queen side. We don't care. We're trying to get an initiative here right out of the gate. Spend some more time with your queen, open things up, and life will be good. The real plan, and one which is very, very uncommon, it's like way down bottom of the list here, is to try to win this e-pawn right away. This is really the only thing that Black can do to kind of stay in the game, uh, although it still might be unpleasant. And here, actually, the best move, which we'll, we'll look at first, is to take. And this is possible due to a nice little tactic. After we grab the knight, this is, of course, not a blunder of an entire piece. Uh, Black's idea is this tactical idea, which is also probably why it's not spotted by so many players. But here, Black will be regaining the piece. So after, for example, queen to d2, the queen will take back the knight, but we still have a very comfortable position. We can, for example, defend our b-pawn, which is attacked by castling. But more importantly, one of the chief targets in this position is going to be this d7 pawn. This is something we want to be able to attack with all of our pieces. And in a lot of cases, there are some curious ideas that are worth pointing out, um, such as bringing in a bishop to h3, which is a very unusual square in a lot of cases, but sometimes that is the best way of using the, the bishop to attack the d-pawn, and it's also worth pointing out, this does restrict the bishop. The bishop now is stuck guarding this guy, so if you had any ideas of bringing the bishop out to b6, uh, you would be thwarted. Now, this is the best black can do. If you put this on the computer, it'll say something. It's about plus one, like white has, has a significant advantage, um, better king safety, we're doing very well here. Um, but that also kind of goes to show that a similar idea that doesn't quite work in uh, this position. So we've come back to, we've just grabbed the rook. On, on a similar line to this d7 pawn becoming the main target, if the opponent plays pawn to b6, we have very similar ideas. Um, a lot of good moves here, a lot of good moves. But for example, even just queen to d2 will prevent black from bringing the bishop out because after castling, it just becomes very difficult for black to defend this thing forever. Our a pawn is not yet attacked because we're threatening mate, so black will have to solve it. The best way, according to the computer, is to drop this guy back. Black is kind of undeveloping. We can uh, defend our pawn one way or another and then decide where if this guy should come out this way, if our bishop should sneak out this way. And the good news is it's all good for white. Everything seems to be working in our favor. And if this is not the best way to continue, um, what a lot of players, at least if you play the England Gambit, might come up with is in this position, after we've grabbed the rook, they might go in for this check. Because if you play the England Gambit enough, you do it because you want to take this b-pawn. You want to live on the edge. A lot of England Gambiteers, they want to take that b-pawn. But this isn't a, a very good continuation. You continue with c3. And after queen takes b2, we want to be a little bit cautious. We don't want to be giving away our c3 pawn, but we really don't care if black wants to munch all day long. Uh, feel free. We are about to get a, a large initiative in the center of the board. Uh, we're going to be able to get castled. We're going to develop this guy. And again, usually it's good. You can develop the bishop through this way, through this way. Usually it all works out. Just gravy for white. But uh, if, for example bishop to a3 which seems to be the most popular move we're going to get a huge initiative no matter what happens the the queen is a very huge target on the b2 square so we can play something like rook to c2 not a lot of good squares it looks like sometimes people go to uh to b6 probably not the best square but you can understand this is not a very appealing square either because we can play e3 e4 we're going to start gaining a lot of time on the queen and having this rook lifted to c2 is probably going to be a huge advantage in the long run because we can just put it on d2 again we're going to have this huge target uh we're up material we're, we're feeling good this is a, a very pleasant and uh this this just has to be winning for white this position so what black needs to do in all of these lines is he needs to go for this e pawn this pawn is just too good and in the game that i played um this was a three minute blitz game my opponent played queen to e4 now i decided to take this is a you know pretty obvious continuation we took back the rook and after knight takes e5 
I played one more move of prep and then my opponent immediately went wrong. So here I played queen to d2. This was the last move that I had prepared. And my opponent here blundered, played the move uh, knight to c4. So we can start by having a glance at knight to c4, but it's also worth pointing out that black has only one okay move in this position. And it's not the main move, which is knight takes c3. This will actually favor us quite a bit. Uh, but the main move, the only way for black to continue is with b6. So let's kind of run through and go down the board here. In the actual game, my opponent played knight to c4. And uh, you can pause if you want to try to figure this out. But I, I just played a winning move in this position. And already the game is basically over because I played queen to c3. Now, this gives me some ideas. Obviously, I'm gonna move my queen. My queen was attacked. It gives me some ideas of playing e3, and all of a sudden, this knight will become a target. I have my bishop lined up right here. But also, if I'm allowed to get rid of this guy somehow, if he moves away, if he goes anywhere, it's very possible that my queen will start sneaking in. So, you know, queen to c7, maybe I can win this bishop as well. Uh, so he's got to be really careful. In the game, he attempted pawn to b5, Supporting the knight, also perhaps giving the queen some access to take my knight. Looks pleasant, but b3, and this is the problem. The knight really can't move. You can't allow my queen to sneak in here. And if you grab my knight, I take your knight, I'm up material. So my opponent did try for some sneaky stuff. Tried this uh, this kind of tricky move, pawn to a5, with some, some pretty nasty ideas, some bishop b4s coming into the action. Uh, but I just played a3, and, and from here, the game was virtually over. He took my knight, I took his knight. I'm up material. I'll leave a link to uh, the game in the description. It wasn't perfect technique, but I don't think I, uh, I ever really lost control of this game. So if you do want to check it out, uh, for theoretical purposes, I think this is enough to declare this to be a huge success uh, for white. Uh, also, this, we come back here. Another mistake that I could very easily see is somebody playing knight takes f3. This looks like a, a totally reasonable way for black to continue, but it actually lets us demonstrate the, the power of opening up this diagonal. Now, we only have one way to capture, so we take back with our g-pawn, but opening up this diagonal actually can become very, very pleasant for us. Black also here might make a lot of mistakes. There's only one okay move, which is queen to c6, but now we castle. And we followed up with bishop to h3. Something like this is already very pleasant. For example, if knight to f6, um, not only is there bishop to h3, but there might also be some of this stuff. Some of this coming in, grabbing these a pawns. Like if b6 were grabbing here, this is a target. This is completely falling apart. And if uh, instead of knight to f6, they play b6. These have been tried just as often as knight to f6. This is probably a little bit better, but bishop to h3. And we have a ton of pressure here we, as uh, as the white pieces. We have just so much pressure on d7. Black will never be able to grab this knight because then we simply grab here that we're just smashing through on the d file. Uh, this would be just horrible. And if knight to f6, we actually have a really strong continuation. Uh, we can just play e4. And we always have the ideas of potentially kicking this knight away. And even if like d6, something like this, looks very, very pleasant uh, for us. Possibly, also, we should grab this bishop and then maybe play here. But yeah, I don't know. This looks uh, this looks to be incredibly fun for white. Okay, so uh, if we do back it up, what else can black do in this position? So he must resist the urge to go directly after my queen, must resist the urge to trade the knights. But black might be okay after the move pawn to b6 with an idea of potentially taking back with the queen and a lot of good moves are potentially here for white for example we could just directly decide to take this knight probably nothing wrong with it uh, one computer line from here is to continue with castling and an idea is after takes we can now take back either way as white but with this bishop already attached to this d-pawn it maybe makes a little bit less sense to take with the g-pawn and try to get pressure against the d-pawn uh, so the computer recommends taking with the e-pawn and after this recapture you can put this bishop somewhere now uh all human games have gone knight to f6 where everybody has been taking here it's possible you can get an advantage by simply dragging this rook into the middle uh, I think both moves are actually good. 
if I, I'm just trying to remember how, how deep I went here, but essentially what you want to do as white is you want to put this queen over here on um, on c3 and you're gonna have this raging pressure against the queen side maybe you can toss in some g4 g5 stuff i don't know i don't think i would want to have my king here on d8 if i were playing this game maybe this is somehow survivable for black but i think we're actually just gonna leave it there i kind of wanted to just make a video point out this interesting curious line knight to c3 it can be a very dangerous line so yeah maybe some people will want to check it out and uh yeah maybe you guys can get some really, really quick wins as well. Enjoy.